Hi, welcome back to a new episode of RISC-V instru Instruction Encodings. We have seen four RISC-V instruction formats so far, so we're going to add one more. That's the one that is going to help us work with long immediates. What we have seen so far, that our immediates have been limited to being 12 bits, but occasionally we need them to be longer. So let's try to see a mechanism how we can use all 32 bits as an immediate value. But before then, let's recap how our branches work, because they'll help us develop a bit of an intuition of what we are trying to do. Um, our branches have that immediate field. And what we have done so far, we have hand compiled what replaces the value that replaces the label in the branch. Um, that label corresponds to the offset, how many instructions away from our current program counter is our target branch. Um, now what happens if we move that instruction in the code? Well, if you just move it branch instruction ahead of another instruction that we had in a code, we have to clearly um, change the, the, the value that sits in the label, that replaces the label, because we have changed the distance, relative distance between the two instructions. So the relative offset from the program counter is not the same. But often what we are going to see will be dealing with a movable code. So most of these compilations are done by the assembly uh, process and we often will link different procedures and different functions with external libraries. So the code may be moving in, uh, in the memory or most generally will be moving in the memory. So when we move a piece of a code, the entire piece of a code in memory that includes loops and branches inside of it, does it, do we need to replay, retarget all of our labels? And the answer is no, and that's an advantage of um, PC relative addressing. And what, um, there is also a term used for that, that this is now position independent code. So if you move a whole procedure to a new location, all relative addressing is preserved. There is another uh, important thing to keep in mind is that the range of our branches, since we are really limited to 13 bit offsets where we uh, drop the last bit, we keep the 12 bits in our instruction encoding, the range is limited to plus minus 1024 instructions away from the branch instruction. So what happens if we need to branch? Rarely, but it may happen that we have to branch to a location that is outside plus minus 1024 instructions. Um, we need help. We can't do that with a single branch instruction. Um, and here is an example how this will happen. So in this case, we have an instruction branch and equal extend x0 to a far away location that is outside our 20,024 range. So this compares the value in the register x10 with a zero and then uh, branches to a far location if um, x10 is equal to zero. If it is not equal to zero, that goes and executes the next instruction in sequence. Now, the way how we would do this, we are going to go flip this branch condition. So we are going to branch on if not equal, when x10 is not zero, to the next. And next here is our next instruction that was supposed to be executed, but in between, if x10 is actually equal to zero, we are going to put a jump. And the idea here is that the jump is going to have a much longer reach than our branches. So that's what we are going to see as a consequence of the next little section about long immediates. So there are there is a format that helps support long immediates. This is a U format that stands for upper immediate instructions, or some people will say unusually long immediates uh, in the instruction. Um, remember, our immediates were limited so far to 12 bits in, uh, in the instructions in the I format also in the branches and, and in, in, in stores. And we got that by reusing the one of the register fields and the, the func7 field. Now, 12 bits is good, 
But if you want to put load the entire 32-bit operand into a register, uh, all the entire 32-bit value into a register, then we are missing 20 bits. So the U format provides a way for getting these missing 20 bits into our register. So here is how the instruction looks like. It's fairly straightforward. It has an opcode in the lowest seven bits. There should be no surprise. This is the same field what we have seen before. And there are two different opcodes for two instructions that we have there. The instructions are Louis and our EPC. Louis stands for load upper immediate, uh, essentially uh, loads an upper immediate into a register destination register RD and leaves the bottom 12 bits, um, resets the, the bottom 12 bits to zeros. And then OWEPC adds upper immediate to PC to the program counter and stores the result in the destination register RD. Now, there are two separate opcodes that we are using for these two instructions, and that's expensive. Um, there is an interesting trick that is happening here. It's outside of this class. That opcode is used across different variants of the RISC-V instruction set architecture, RV3264128. Now, so what we need for this instruction is essentially 12 bits to say what kind of instruction it is, and what is the destination register. We have miraculously freed up the top 20 bits, and that's where we can put our 20 bit immediate. Very well, let's see how we use this. So Louis writes the upper 20 bits in, in the destination with the immediate value and clears the lower 20 bits. So when we would like to put in a 32 bit immediate into a destination register, we need to chop that immediate into two halves. This has happened to some other Louis, which was a French king. Any similarities are accidental here. So we are going to cut this immediate into two halves. First, we are going to Louis the upper 20 bits into the destination register that is shown in here in X10. That is going to put the upper five nibbles into that destination register. It is going to leave the lower three nibbles as zeros. Then we can simply do add immediate of the value that contains the lower three nibbles. So in this case, we would like to put the final value 87654321 into a register X10, and we did it in two steps. In the first step, Louis put 87654 into the upper 20 bits or upper five nibbles, and then add immediate, finish that by adding 3 to 1 to the bottom. This worked fine, but there is a catch. It does not always work um, out of the box. Here is an issue. Uh, dead beef is a completely legit hexadecimal number. So how do we load dead beef into the register X10? X so let's try to follow the same procedure. First we go and load the the Louis the, the first part dead B. Alright, that's good. So now X10 contains the value dead B000. And then if we add the immediate if there we end up with dead A if. Oh what happened here? We were supposed to get dead B if we got dead A if. And the problem there is remember Add immediate looks at this, the most significant bit of E, and sign extends it. So since it found a 1 in the most significant bit position of hexadecimal value E, it sign extended it all the way to the upper 32 bits. So when adding these operands, in the upper 5 nibbles, it placed all 1s, which is equivalent to a minus 1. That's why this bit B the, 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 the nibble that contained B got decremented. So that's a problem. This doesn't sound right. So what do we do? Well, we know that, that this is not right. So, but can't we just use add immediate unsigned? Isn't there an instruction like that? Nope. There is no uh, add immediate unsigned in RISC-V. 
remember we basically ran out of Funk 3 um, space and there was no room for another uh, instruction in there so add immediate was voted off the island uh, add immediate unsigned was voted off the island um, so we have to live with what we got here we would have, you know in order to add more instruction we, we had we would have had to spend another um, uh, up field upcode field so what do we do well we know that what is going to happen we are going to have one less uh, one bit lower value in the fifth nibble from the top so we are going to on purpose make it a little bit bigger bigger by a value of one so we have added plus one here this is supposed to be plus one so how do we set dead beef in register extend we first write dead c by using a louis and then we add immediate if value to that and that is going to set the correct value in register extend now there is good news um, this is a known thing known procedure so every time we have that a compiler can take care of things so there is a pseudo instruction pseudo operation that is load immediate and whenever we try to load a long immediate into register any but in this case extend if we just write li extend and the value it is going to do the proper thing it is going to break it up into two proper instructions that will finish the job for us so just don't do this louis addy just use li in assembly code and you get yourself set with the appropriate um, long immediate okay that's it for louis for now we are going to see some a uh, few, few more uses of louis in the next segment but for now um, let's see one missing instruction that we have uh, that we mentioned early on which is um, our epc that adds upper immediate value to the current content of the program counter and stores the result in the destination register rd so this is great for pc relative addressing because we can add uh, offsets to the current content of the program counter that sounds great in the simplest case something that we really wanted to have uh, early on if we add a zero if we use zero as the immediate value in our pc we are simply storing the, va the current value of the program counter in the destination register that's incredibly convenient that's essentially our return address so uh, well in, by doing this we can put an address of a label in uh, in uh, our epc by uh, uh, in register extend by saying our epc extend comma zero that's it that wraps up upper immediates we are going to see one final format after the break <laughs>